All right, I'm going to quickly do a set of small videos here on the Instant Pot um, potted yogurt that I make. Uh, potted yogurt is French style, like wee yogurt. If you've ever had wee, it's very, very thick uh, yogurt and really nice uh, flavor to it and texture to it. Uh, and a lot of people have asked for help on it, so I thought I would just do this quickly. So I have an Instant Pot Ultra and that's going to make a difference uh, with some of the recipe. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use um, four and a half, four to four and a half cups of whole milk. It needs to be whole milk or it won't work right. And I'll talk more about the milk later. Uh, I use Fairlife whole milk because it is um, higher in protein. And so it actually makes a thicker yogurt. And... Uh, so yeah, it'll make six to seven pots, wee size pots of um, yogurt. And uh, this is a potted yogurt recipe. So, um, so we're gonna start on um, ultra mode. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to do 30 minutes. And for a temperature, you're gonna do custom temperature. Oops, sorry, I gotta go back here. Um, you're gonna do a custom temperature and I have mine set, well, it's 186 right now, but typically I do 190. So anywhere from 180 to 190. And you're going to do that for 20 to 30 minutes. It really doesn't matter a whole lot. Supposedly, the longer you go, the, the thicker the yogurt. But anyway, uh, you keep the lid off. You put your milk in. And you just do that ultra mode for 30 minutes. Again, 180 to 190. Any lower than that is just going to make it thinner yogurt. Um, if you don't have an ultra mode that gives you the ability to select a no pressure temperature, fixed temperature, some of the other models will let you do like high, medium, low. Uh, you just want it to be in that 180 to 190 range. If you don't, then you'll have to do it on the stovetop. Get yourself a, a decent, uh, you know, kitchen thermometer that you can use um, to check it, but you're going to have to be diligent. Um, it needs to be 180 to 190, um, and you're going to have to do that. You don't have to do it for 30 minutes if you're doing it on a stovetop. You could just do it, get it up to 190, turn it off, and let it cool down. So we're going to go ahead and do that phase, and then I'll come back. Okay, we're back. And what I did is I've got this, uh, had been up to 190 for 30 minutes in the Instant Pot. Uh, so just really you can see that the milk... Uh, it's hot. You can maybe see a little steam off it. And then I added the sugar. And what you want for the sugar is um, one third to one half a cup of sugar per batch. And again, the batch is four to four and a half cups of whole milk. Uh, again, like I said before, I use Whole Life because it's high protein and it makes a thicker yogurt. Uh, you'll have to use whatever you have access to. Don't use lactose-free milk or anything like that because you need that sugar to feed the uh, to feed the starter bacteria, and uh, we'll talk about that later. But it's been going for the 30 minutes, it's done. I've added the sugar. This is actually a double batch, so it'll make probably 12 to 14 pots um, of yogurt. And so I've used um, probably two, a little over two thirds of a cup of sugar. You can use a little more if you like it sweeter. So that's it, and, and while it's hot, while it's 190-ish, you know, go ahead and put your sugar in and mix it. That way the sugar fully dissolves. And you may get some skim on the top. Remove that or it'll be gross. And as you're whisking it, don't dig deep onto that bottom of the, of the uh, insert because there may be, you know, burnt pieces on the bottom of the milk and you don't want to get that grossness. Now, I like to take my inner pot out at this point so that it'll cool down quicker. Um, you want to get this down to 110 to 115 Fahrenheit. If it's too hot, then it'll kill the starter culture. If it's too cold, the, the starter culture won't be able to pick up and actually grow. So it's really important. So again, a kitchen thermometer is really helpful. If you don't have one, then um, you know, take a teaspoon out and touch it with your finger. Don't go sticking your finger in the milk because other people might eat your yogurt and that's gross. So, uh, so take a little bit out and just make sure it's lukewarm. You don't want it cold. You don't want it hot. But 110 to 15 is where you want this. We're going to come back. Sugar and milk are all that's in here right now. 
um, will come back uh, after it's cooled down. So it's been about 10 minutes. You can see this is still way too hot. We do not, you know, I just got it in the middle of milk. We do not want it that hot. So we'll come back in 10 more minutes and see if it's down to 110 to 115. All right, so we are cooled down. You can see we're at about one, well, if it's in there, it's right at about 114. Let's see if we can get it in there. So we're a little between 110 and 114, so that's perfect. The next step we're gonna do is we're gonna add our vanilla. Um, I like to use a vanilla paste. Um, alcohol and a lot of vanilla extracts can kill the bacteria, but you can use it, it'll, it'll work. But I found with the vanilla paste, it, it uh, really gives you a better flavor. And the one I'm using also has seeds in it. So, oops. So I'm gonna put, because I'm making a double batch, usually you use one teaspoon. I'm using a little over two because I've got a double batch here. And the, another thing a lot of folks I've read online will do is use uh, vanilla powder because it doesn't have the alcohol in it. But again, it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and, and mix the vanilla in. You can see it. Just get it through there. And you see it's just got nice seeds in there. And then I am going to take our culture. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, and you guys probably all know, is yogurt has bacteria in it, and that's what, you know, makes it good for your, your digestive tract and everything. And I'm going to get at them. Because this is very, you really don't use a lot. I get, I love this uh, uh, ABY-2C. You can get it on Amazon or from Homesteader Supply. Uh, it's really nice and you know it makes a lot so uh, there it is and what you're going to do is you really need a small measuring spoon because per four cups of milk so per batch and again we're doing two batches you want to use a sixteenth of a teaspoon so because I'm making a double batch I'm going to use just slightly over around an eighth of a teaspoon and just sprinkle it over the milk and you're going to want to rinse that because it is bacteria um, healthy bacteria um, and make sure this is room temperature I keep it in the fridge but make sure it's room temperature before you use it and then just mix that in doesn't have to be great it will propagate quickly and then come back in 10 minutes after it's had time to propagate okay so now we're going to take our trivet Rinsed out, actually cleaned out, and I dumped the water. Cleaned out the inner pot. I don't put water in it for the yogurt. Then the trivet I've got folded up, so it's just like that. And then I've got my wee jar. Oh, go ahead. And then I got my wee jars. You can also use any other small. I think these are five or six ounces. And this is where it gets messy, so I like to have a towel here. I got 12 jars, I'm missing a couple, so I'm going to have a little extra milk. But uh, if you don't like the foam, you can skim it if you really want to. All it does is it leaves a little bit of foam on the top of your yogurt. It's really not hurting anything. Um, you want it super smooth on the top. Uh, and then I've got these little lids. You get them on Amazon. There, I'll, I'll give you the link, but... Uh, they're basically for some other kind of jar, but they fit these wheeze perfectly. So I'm just going to take our mixture, and I'm going to pour it in. Again, this can be kind of messy. And you can see this uh, vanilla I use has a ton of seeds in it, so it, they, they kind of sink to the bottom. 
So your last few are going to be super seedy. Okay, so I got 11 out of that. And then if you want, you know, you can just go top off the other ones that didn't get seeds if you're using the paste. Just kind of makes it look cool and it gives it a little bit richer flavor. Okay, so I wound up getting 11 out of that. And again, that was a half gallon of milk. Uh, you might want to have a wash rag available to get rid of any drips. Uh, you do not have to use these though. If you want, you can cut out little circles or little squares of aluminum foil. All you're trying to do is keep moisture out of this so it'll thicken. Actually putting it in these pots is what makes it thicker. If you don't want it thick, you could just leave all your milk in here and go to yogurt mode. And then it'll make a, a, like a regular kind of yogurt. But if you want that thick potted yogurt, you really need to do this. So then I just take the lids and I put them on and then I press the top and kind of, you know, lift it to squeeze the air out. And then I just start setting them in here. So I'm going to do that. It's not totally necessary to burp these and get all the air out, but I like to do that. Uh, if you use aluminum foil, um, like my, my daughter-in-law uses aluminum foil, you can actually fit more jars in one batch because these lids are really kind of clunky and take up a lot of space. And sometimes I can't even fit seven in here at a time with these lids. Just make sure they're not dripping and the lids aren't coming off. Now we're going to see if I can actually fit another ring in here. Like I said, with the lids, it's, it's much harder to get a bunch in here and still get the lid on, the, the, the instant pot lid. So if that doesn't work, I'll show you. I can only do so many at a time. Now, you can manually do these. You can use these in a yogurt cooker too, or apparently how yogurt originally was made is you can just leave it out for two days. So it sounds kind of gross to me, but whatever. So then we're going to try and get our instant pot lid on. And if it doesn't go on, then we may have to lose a soldier here. Yeah, see, it's not letting it go on. If you use aluminum foil, so I lost one. So 10 with this recipe is what you'll get if you're using these lids. If you're not using the lids, use aluminum foil, you can get 14 and easy. Uh, like I said, I know my daughter-in-law did. Now the next step we're going to do, this is the long step, is we're going to come here and we're going to go to yogurt mode. And first thing we're going to do is set, press and set our time. All the Instapots but the Duos have this. Or not the duo, sorry, the uh, or whatever the bottom line one is, doesn't have a yogurt mode. So we're going to come in here. Nine hours is the minimum I would do for this potted yogurt. That's going to give you a little bit sweeter. Uh, if you go 10, 11 hours, the more hours you go, the, the tartar it's going to be. So for this one, I'm actually going to get one a little bit tart this time. So I'm going to take it to 11 hours. Temperature medium, if that's the default. And then hit start. And then come back in a little over 11 hours and whatever hours you set and your yogurt will be done. I'll see you then. All right. It has been 11 hours. The instant pot is off. So you don't really need to release or anything because there's no pressure. But we're going to go ahead and open her up. See what we got. Now they're going to, they could be a little warm. There they are. There's an example of one. Let's go see how it turned out. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of liquid that's whey. You can leave it. It's, it's actually healthy for you. Or if you just want it to be more like store, you can drain it off. <clears throat> and even though you really need to chill this overnight or at least for an hour or two. But I want to show you, even before it's chilled, how thick this is. 
Look at that. It's really, really thick, almost like ice cream. Um, and then after it's been chilled overnight, uh, <clears throat> it'll be really super thick. And uh, I'll take a video of that in the morning when I have one. So, uh, again, that black stuff is, is the vanilla seeds. It's not burnt or anything. But this batch came out great. And one other thing I wanted, wanted to mention is if you don't have a bacterial starter, um, you can a culture, you can just go get a vanilla Wii from the store, just a regular Wii, and you can use that as your, as your starter. And what I would do for that is I would, you know, once you're past the phase where you're, you're cooled down, where it's down to 110, 115, take out a cup of the liquid, mix in that yogurt as your starter, make it nice and smooth, and then add it back and whisk it into your whole thing of milk. So you could do it that way um, if you don't have a starter. And if you do have a starter, but you don't have a lot, make one batch and then save one of these to use as your starter for your next batch. It totally propagates and can propagate pretty much forever. So uh, that's it. We'll look at it tomorrow and show you the finished product uh, after it's chilled. All right, and so here's the morning after. This has been chilling overnight, uh, probably about six hours. And you can see in the spoon, just it's really thick. Oh, and it's delicious. Again, if you like that French thick potted yogurt style, this is a great recipe to try.